Word talk. No, that ain't any of word talk. That. Oh, we're we're on. Anyway, hola. My name is Joey Lopez. I'm here to take Professor Webb's job today and let you know about the anal Indians. So, like my project, can help me get an A. Before I even get into the anal Indians, you obviously got to know where they live. All right. So, uh, before Puerto Rico was even called Puerto Rico, it was called Puerto Rican, and that's why I'm called Puerto Rico. Damn, that's smart. Anyway, that's besides the point. So it was called Booty Gang, even way before Christopher Columbus even got there. All right, he took over the people, yada, 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 all this stuff. But back to the island. Um, you know, it approximately runs about 100 miles long, 35 miles wide. Seems pretty small. I mean, it sounds small when I heard it. But, you know, um, it, uh, it is pretty big when you get there. You know, it's not just like, it's a little thing. No. Nah. So, yeah, uh, Borican is a part of the Greater Antilles, you know, because we so great and all, yeah, <laughs> you know. Uh, anyway, part of the Greater Antilles, as I said, uh, consisting of Cuba, Haiti, Jamaica, and the Dominican Republic. Um, you know, it's full of Taino Indians, real, real, real peaceful type of people. They only fight as a last resort. Who are the Taino Indians? I'm going to let you know right now, because I know you want to know. They're a subgroup of Arawak Indians. They came from a part, uh, a part of Northeast South America. Don't know what's in Northeast South America. But you could ask Professor Webb, because that dude knows everything about Latin America, you know? Yeah, shout out to Professor Webb. Give me an A. Like I said, they are a very peaceful uh, type of people. You know, I uh, just did agriculture stuff, as most tribes did. They hunted. They, uh, hunted. <laughs> hunted. Stuff that indigenous people do. Oh, oh I, I remember what they do. I remember what they did. Besides hunting, they built their houses, did some di uh, indigenous dances. Um, and they built houses, too. As I said, it was called Burica before, but it wasn't until Christopher Columbus landed there, November 19th, 1493, where he actually called the island itself San Juan after St. John the Baptist and the city that he landed in, Puerto Rico, Bridgeport in, you know, in English, where it's translated, because of uh, the gold nuggets that Taino Indians showed him and my man got greedy. It wasn't until 1521 where they actually switched names and the island itself became Puerto Rico and the city that he was in was actually San Juan now. So, you know, you should go over there and check it out. It's a nice place. Village life. So, Taino Indians live in village in which they called... Wait, wait, I, 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 need, I need a moment with this one. It's, uh... You... You... Guy... Get. That. There were real small villages and stuff, you know, usually ran by a chief called caciques. You know, they usually lived in a, in a rectangular house in the center of the village. You know, usually faced the Bates, which was the uh, stadiums which they played their, their games. You know, where they had their dance ceremonies and all that cool stuff. They had wooden frames. Uh, they usually topped with straws and stuff, you know, like a, like a hut and all that. It doesn't seem too hurricane proof, you know, so um, that sucks for them. They also participated in games called Aretos, A-R-E-Y-T-O-S, told stories around campfires, and participated in games in the Bate, as I said before, you know, included a rubber ball. Um, the balls also itself were called Bates. You know, stadiums weren't that big, obviously, because like I said, they lived in small villages, so they used what they could, and those games were believed to that if you had won, they would bring your children better health, a better life, all that stuff, you know, kind of like the NFL, you know, if you play good, you get money and all that. Yeah, <laughs> you know, they even lived under strict rules. I mean, it got to the point where like you had to ask permission to have a kid or it was one of, one of those, or one of those or, mm, stuff like that. Village politics. Now, they lived under theocratic villages, you know, theocratic obviously meaning, you know, God is the civil ruler, number one. The caciques came second. They were divided into three social classes. Naborias, the working class, you know, your fishers, your hunters, 
uh, those who did all the hard labor, usually they worked on something called gonukos. They were like small mounds of soil where they prepared some of the food, especially yuca. We still eat it today. Pretty good. It also included the nitainos, which included the noblemen and bohicas. The bohicas are the priests and the medicine men. The medicine men actually use like herbal medicine, stuff like this. Damn, that's some good stuff. Taino technology. Now, like I said, they were used mostly by the Navorias, uh, especially the hunters, the fishers, stuff like that, hard laborers. The hunters would use stuff like bow and arrows, clubs to go hunt for their food. Fishers would use cotton, palm tree leaves as their nets. And uh, most of the hard laborers, you know, they would actually make canoes on average that would fit 15 to 20 people. But in Taino language, canoe is a canoa. That's how they said it before. But then again, as I said, it can only fit 15 to 20 people. They can only count to 20 at that time. Some warfare instruments that were used were bow and arrows as well as the, the hunters. And also the clubs that I was telling you about, also called a manaka. They're about one inch thick. As for the bow and arrow tips, they would actually put poison on there so that it would have a bigger effect on the enemies that they would fight. But like I said before, they were very peaceful people. They would use that as a last resort. If there was no escape, they'd fight. Taino dances. Now remember before I told you they were called aretos and they took place in the bate. They were usually to celebrate somebody becoming a new uh, cacique, somebody arriving maybe. Instruments were played, you know, um, the wooden drums, also called maya huacanes. Rattles, we all know them as maracas now. And also these little scrapers that they call huidos. Taino language. Now as I said before, they can only count to 20. As I said before, there were a subgroup from Arawak Indians. So number one was Heketi, number two was Yamoka, three was Kanukum, and four was Bibiti. Two words I share with you right now. Man is Iru, woman, Inaru. A lot of the language said was said to be extinguished, but it, honestly it's not. Over 500 words were absorbed into the Spanish language, especially in the Caribbean. Uh, words like Iguana, Yuca. So Iguana, everybody knows what that is. Yuca was that food that I, uh, explained earlier and amaca is hammock in spanish that's my iru <laughs> that's my iru <laughs> right, now on to the good stuff demographic decrease so as i said back in november 19th 1493 christopher columbus went over to what was then boriquen in which he called San Juan, and at the minute that they got there, the Taino Indians swore that Columbus and his people were gods. You gotta see it. I'm. There's a little preview. Girl, look at that body. Girl, look at that body. Girl, look at that body. I work out. Girl, look at that body. Girl, look at that body. Girl, look at that body. I work out when I walk in the spot. They believed in the Zemi gods. You know, it was, um, they had God for this, God for that. As I said before, one for health, one for rain, one for all that stuff. But then again, like I said, Christopher Columbus came and he was under Isabella and Fer 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 Ferdinand. Under the order of Queen Isabella from Spain, she wanted all the Tainos to convert to Christianity. She forced them to wear clothes. Slavery came about. No, it wasn't just the black people. Get your facts straight. Hard labor was expected of them. The typical stuff that those slaves had to work to do, you know, make canoes, get food, all this, and everything was for them Europeans. So eventually, after all that, the Taino Indians died out, and a couple of reasons why were uh, human exploitation, abuse, mixed blood, uh, genocide, revolts, all that stuff. So basically what happened was that, you know, some of the slaves, like I said, they were overworked, malnourished, and obviously when you're malnourished, everything goes downhill from there, passed out, died, wiped out. Some of the slave owners would look at them, you know, they felt some type of way, they looked at an Indian, and... 
They got so tired of some of the stuff that the Europeans were even doing that they even revolted. And obviously the technology that the Europeans had was so much greater than the Indians and all went downhill there. You know what I'm saying? They, like I said, they had bow and arrows, they had clubs. Europeans, what did they got? They got guns, they got swords, they had cannons. All self-explanatory there. So you put them together, weigh it out, and you can obviously see who wins. Besides those Taino Indians fighting in the war, the Europeans actually went after their families, children, wives, all those people who were innocent and wiped them out by burning down the houses, the villages, doing whatever they can to make their lives a living hell. New diseases were also exposed to Taino's Indians. Stuff like smallpox, measles, yellow fever. It wiped out a whole big population of Taino Indians because their immune systems weren't even accustomed to those diseases. First time they seen them, first time they got them. And then again, medicine wasn't even like it was nowadays. Like I said, they used herbal medicines and what they thought was okay didn't work. The slave owners were also consumed in the gold that the island actually had. So what happened was that they sent all the male Taino Indians over to the gold mines. They would work the gold mines, try to find all the gold so that Europeans would get rich. Whereas the women would stay back, they would do the cleaning, they would do the cooking, they would please the master as he wanted. So about 500 years later, now, they all say that Taino Indian culture is extinct. But statistics actually say that 85% of those in Puerto Rico have actually Taino blood running in them. Which is why I'm here. So imagine the percentage now with all the Puerto Ricans that live in New York, California, Philly, just America in general. I'm telling you, Taino you know, Indians are still relevant and still everywhere. Actually, you know what's interesting? I'll tell you right now. I actually found a couple a couple days ago. Check it out. Come here. All right. Finally made it here, observing the Taino Indians in natural habitat, but I don't know, I'm so nervous right now, so n Ugh. All right, look, whatever you do, I promise you, this is real life. But don't try this at home, all right. Attack dogs. I gotta, I gotta get out of here. I gotta get out of here. Come on, come on, come on, come on. That's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, you know, so if you go out there and you see a Puerto Rican, shake their hand because you never know when you come across another Taino Indian. At least you had the, uh, you know, enjoyment of meeting me because I'm one of them and all that. You know. <laughs> yeah, so, but if you have any more questions, you ask Professor Webb because that dude knows everything about everything Spanish. Bye.